Welcome back everybody, Kidney Warrior Brick here, and we're talking about dialysis. If you didn't check out my last video, make sure you go ahead over here and check it out. That's where I covered hemodialysis. In this video, we're gonna talk about more about PD, and at the end, I will also do a demo. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the other form of dialysis for those with CKD is called peritoneal dialysis. This type of dialysis also has two different forms on, way, on how to do it, but both are done at your home. However, you do spend a little time in center and sort of a tutorial on how the nurses, the nurses will teach you on how to successfully perform the treatment at home. That way there's no risk or injury to you. So the only time that you'll actually be going to a center would be that time of the training, plus going once or twice a month to the center to get your labs and to talk to the doctor, or if you need to talk to the social worker, or even the dietitian for those of you who are needing to get your labs better and under control. But definitely not as much as somebody who's doing in-center hemo. Can't get around going to see the doctor. So everybody goes sees the doctor once or twice a month. This type of dialysis is also done much differently than hemodialysis. You don't use needles as in a fistula or graft with hemodialysis and you don't use a CVC catheter as in with hemodialysis. However, there is a catheter that you will use that you need surgery for, and this goes more into the abdomen, which uses the peritoneal. This catheter also poses a much lower risk than the CVC catheter in hemodialysis, so showering with this type of catheter is just fine for those who might have some type of phobia with the needles, so hemodialysis doesn't seem that appealing, but they still want to do things like shower. However, depending on where you live and certain doctor's preferences, um, there are certain people and studies that show that swimming in certain areas, such as I live in the south, so let's say swimming in a gulf would be a no-go. However, swimming in something such as a salted pool, just fine. So kind of give and take there on what you can do swimming wise, but showers are definitely an okay thing to do with the PD after the healing process, obviously. The biggest obstacle to watch out for on PD is an infection known as peritonitis, which is generally caused from contamination or improper use of doing PD. So this type of dialysis actually uses a membrane in your abdomen or your stomach that is known as the peritoneum. And if you don't know what that is, you never heard of it, or you'd like to see it, let's check it out. Fortunately, many of your abdominal organs are held in place by a serous membrane called the peritoneum. The peritoneum is a double layer of simple squamous serous tissue called the mesothelium. And there are two layers of peritoneum. Two layers are known as the parietal peritoneum and the visceral peritoneum. Together, both layers anchor organs and provide support for their movements. Okay, so in here, this is the abdominal cavity, right? Now, if this is the peritoneum, goes in here, like this. It's covering all of these things. So what you can see here is that the kidneys, the inferior vena cava, the uh, abdominal aorta, the renal vessels, the ureters, the common iliac arteries, all these muscles of the posterior abdominal wall are posterior to the peritoneum. So we say that they are retroperitoneal. The reason it's called peritoneal dialysis is that it uses the peritoneum, which is the lining around all of the organs in the abdomen, as a filter. This lining is filled with capillaries or small blood vessels, and the poisons that are normally filtered by the kidneys can be moved across that filter by placing a solution into the abdomen. When the patient drains that solution out, it contains the poisons that would normally have been filtered by the kidneys. How well PD can actually absorb this metabolic waste actually depends on types of solutions, which I'll show in a minute, as well as genetic factors like how well your membrane actually works. And dialysis, dialysis will actually do 
at least one test, if not several, to make sure that your membrane is in good health while you're doing peritoneal dialysis. A treatment for PD usually lasts six to 10 hours. Now, I know what you're thinking, and that does sound longer than the hemodialysis, but this is actually done while you're sleeping. Well, one form anyway. Again, there was two forms. So you can do manual treatments and then you can do a machine, a CCPD or a CAPD. So if you do the manuals, which most people start out with, you know, you will have to do that yourself. But then after like a month, you didn't transfer over to the machine and start learning that. And most people, 90% of people are using that for their treatment. How they judge what your treatment time is, again, depends on genetics and how well the dialysis is working, as well as the type of solution or fluid that you will be using for your treatments. And you're, since you're in charge of the treatment options, you will be needing to choose that for yourself. So we'll go over that in just a minute. But this solution is the part of dialysis that actually does the dialyzing, the cleansing of the blood. There are three different strengths commonly used, but there are special formulas available as well. The three commonly used are 1.5, 2.5, and 4.25%. The percent stands for the amount of dextrose contained in a bag. Dextrose is a type of carbohydrate and can and will be converted to glucose the longer it is in your body. And since dextrose is converted to glucose, for diabetics, this means that you will need to adjust your insulin. However, your doctor will go ahead and try and work with you on what's best for you. Now, there are no current studies that suggest peritoneal dialysis causes diabetes. However, if you're pre-diabetic, it will worsen the condition. And obviously, if you're diabetic, you will just need to increase the amount of insulin that you're currently using. So keep that in mind in case you're wanting to choose PD and yes, also, I'll mention this, you will need to count calories if you're trying to lose weight and carbohydrates. Since dextrose is a carbohydrate, that gets converted to glucose. So diabetics do need to count this as a carb. Since we're on the subject of PD, let me go ahead and set up a little demonstration of my PD machine that I used for almost five years now. And maybe that'll help you understand what PD is a little bit better. So as you can see right here, this is actually the entrance into my office, which is where I keep most of my PD stuff. Let's go ahead and take a look at this right quick. So a lot of people uh, starting PD or who may be in training and just heard that they're gonna be getting supplies sent to their house, had generally asked questions like, well, how big of a space do I need? So I went ahead and uh, I laid out a space in where I keep most of my boxes, which is right behind me. So let's go ahead and check that out. As you can see here, I've uh, went ahead and laid out a tape measure for actually what is the width or length of my area that I store my equipment or my supplies rather. And it's a little over 78 inches, maybe 78 and a quarter. So a little over six feet is the total area that I use for my supplies. This is maybe a week and a half into my monthly shipment of dialysis supplies. I still have four boxes right there. And these are the cassettes that you will actually need to use on PD. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at that in a second when I show you all a demo on how to set up the PD machine or one of them anyway, since there's multiple that you could have. Um, but yeah, this is basically it. Six and a half by, let's see, by two feet exactly is about the room area that you need or that I required. All right, guys, so uh, I actually found some pics. And uh, so I wanna show them to you. This first picture is my first delivery pick of all my supplies sent to me the first time I ever had a shipment, which was quite a shock to see. I mean, so many boxes, you're like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna store so much stuff? And this next picture, it is my fourth order and my little mini me sitting on top of things. Uh, I'm starting to better cut down on space needed and getting a better handle on, you know, the type of supplies and things that I need. And after this is three years later, I streamline basically everything I need. You know, as I say, I, I always have like one extra week that I actually need 
with the supplies, but most of these supplies are what I use in one month plus one or two extra weeks, just depending on how I'm feeling or the type of weather that I may be experiencing. So one thing with this is that you will never have to actually bring these boxes in. Actually, what will happen is when they ship out your, your supplies, the guys who bring it there will actually move all of the boxes and everything into your house for you. And you just tell them, you know, where it is that you want them stacked or put. Now, I always keep my cassette boxes that you see right here, right at this line of my door, because I, I want them to know not to put anything past that. But one thing that you'll need to know about the uh, people who will bring these in to you is that they don't like to go a certain height. These boxes that you see over here are different. These are manual boxes. Now, since I didn't include a demo of manual, I wanted to include this picture. This is one of the few times that I actually needed to use the manual setup. So I try and keep my supplies separated. That way I know what I have. You will be having to make your own shipment delivery uh, orders every month. And generally you'll get an idea of how much you need. You know, the first month or two, you might be overwhelmed and not know exactly. And then they'll just ship you a whole bunch of stuff. They'll give you way tons of stuff. They gave, they kept giving me stuff that I didn't even need. So I got the hang of just kind of balancing what I needed month to month with one week extra just in case. So this is the PD machine. And we're going to go ahead and actually turn this on so we can get ready. And I'm going to go ahead and give a demo. This is kind of the setup that I had here. This is just where my machine is and in my office, as I had previously showed, that's kind of where I keep all my equipment. So you could just keep your machine here. You don't have to keep equipment by it unless you choose to. And this is just my regular bedroom, which I found it uh, much easier to do dialysis if I had something to keep me busy, you know, TV, entertainment, etc. Now, while we're looking at this fan, this is one point that you may need to keep in mind. No fans can actually be on when you're hooking up to your dialysis machine. It has to have still air because you don't want any dust or anything like that kicking around that could cause you an infection. All right, so here we are. This is basically what the boot up screen looks like for my machine. Basically, what I would do is reject because I program my own settings but if you don't that's okay all you have to do is push accept now where this information comes from is something called an IQ drive it looks like a flash drive right here and it just plugs in see without that there's there's no information it's called IQ drive so your dialysis team uh, programs all the information that you need to know right in here. And if your prescription changes, as mine has changed like maybe four times, they'll give you a new one. And then you can go ahead and just plug it in the back of the machine right there. You can see the USB port and just plugs in and just stays in there. Okay, so we'll have to wait for this again a whole minute. Now, what I would do, as I said, I program my own stuff. I don't recommend this to any newcomers. You know, you have to go through and learn a lot about how you should program your machine. For now, let's just reject. I go to settings and I do a title. What title is, is that it'll leave a little bit of fluid left in you or dialysate left in you because a lot of people experience cramping as the dialysate or fluid is coming off of the body during the end. So a title helps make that just a little bit easier. Okay, so I have my initial settings set up that I pretend wanna use for the night or the treatment. And so now I just need to press okay for the machine just to uh, set up the software. So let me go ahead and get all the packaging and explain that. So here we go, I have the equipment, which is just gonna be one bag. I don't feel like setting it all up. I mean, I don't need to actually do a treatment. However, with the normal treatment, I was actually running three bags. Each bag is 5,000 milliliters, which coincidentally is five liters, which equates to about five pounds. This is the cassette that I was talking about earlier, and it will be placed into this compartment. Gather supplies wear mask and wash hands. Then after you do those steps, then you insert the cassette into this compartment. And let me go ahead and open the box. This is what it looks like. And we'll be placing the cassette in there and closing it back. So now that I've 
closed the cassette door it's went ahead and started setting it up and getting the sensors ready and everything like that and I will go ahead and just place this bag up here now this metal device right here this is actually a warming device so it actually warms the bag that you put up here which will be your first bag and if you have more than one bag every other bag will come through the warm solution before it does go into your abdomen okay now it says to connect the solution lines and this cassette is what is connected to the solution so we'll go ahead and set that up and connect drain line the drain line is also on this cassette and we'll go into the bathroom and set that up so these little tabs right here you just take them right off it's just tape just to keep all the packaging nice and neat in the factory so this blue one actually will be connected to the catheter on your abdomen so this piece here is a stay safe this is where you'll go ahead and plug up your uh, piece that will be connected to your catheter and that kind of just sits there until uh, you're ready to be connected and you're going to sanitize again before you do that But the next thing that we got to do is connect the drain line So let's go ahead and head into the bathroom and I'll show you how I did that And actually while we're looking at this toilet where I'm going to connect the drain line uh, I want to flash back to a problem that actually happens with PD You'll get this sort of buildup from the uh, solution as well as protein and other waste products like that that are actually coming out of you and into the toilet where they'll be flushed away. And I have a picture of that, so if I can find it, this is where I'll place it. Okay, so I found the picture that I was describing. And so this first picture is sort of just like a palate cleanser. And I want to warn you, if you don't like looking at anything gross or nasty, this is your time to go ahead and skip ahead maybe 30 seconds from now. Okay, so here it is. This is the gross, nasty pic of actually what happens to your toilet during peritoneal dialysis. All this black stuff around the uh, toilet that's building up, this is actually uh, some of the residue from all the proteins and obviously some of the dextrose carbohydrates that is coming from the machine, uh, from the, uh, the dialysate, and just more of the metabolic waste that you're releasing when you're doing dialysis let's go ahead and grab our yellow line that's the drain line that's where all the used solution and fluid that's being pulled off of your body will come and i actually wrap this around the toilet seat so let me go ahead and do that and that's how that looks right there and it'll just go ahead and drain and they'll even tell you at dialysis that this is a, one of the safe ways to go ahead and do this as long as it's not touching the toilet bowl or you know some kind of crazy thing like that some people do however choose to drain it into their tub but if i had that picture and you just seen it you'll understand why you don't want to do that uh, some other people choose to just drain it into buckets and then ditch the buckets. I'm not sure how that works, but it's what I've heard. All right, so back to the machine. So that green tab right there is for the bag I have on the heating element, and we will connect the first line to the bag. Now, ideally, you will be wearing a mask. That way you're not, you know, transporting any bacteria or viruses that you may be unaware of. Let's go ahead and wait for this to finish and then I'll show you the next part. The next screen is up and it's went ahead and it has sensed that the correct bags are there. And now for my machine, what it requires you to do is to break the cone and clamp unused lines. So that's any line that's not connected to another bag. There's a cone in here, that little red piece right there. What you're gonna do is just break it and sometimes they could be like a little pain just to be completely honest with you and you're just going to have to shake that cone into the bag like that all right and for us all of these are unused and while we're going ahead and looking at these clamps you can see that this one is green these are white and actually this one is red and these mean things so like the red always goes to your heater bag the white are for extra bags and the green is for any kind of medication that you might have to plug up while on dialysis let's go ahead and push next so we can go ahead and set up the next part on this part uh you'll actually notice 
that uh, it's actually priming the lines so fluid will start to come through here to make sure that there's no air it actually travels through the whole machine um, we can actually watch it look you can see it moving what will happen now is that it's traveling through the drain the drain line this is called a pillow now the pillow is something you'll check uh, to make sure that there isn't a risk of peritonitis this is supposed to be clear however if any chance it's not clear then you may have peritonitis and you'll need to contact your team I also found some of the pics of the pillow uh, and I want to show you this. So this first picture is actually what a clean pillow is supposed to look like. It's very clear and clean, uh, no type of contaminants. This is what it's looking like when you're actually doing a treatment. Now these next few slides are ones that I'm actually experiencing peritonitis during these. I've experienced peritonitis three times, and believe me, it was very painful. It's not something you want to go through, but this is what the pillow will look like. It's very dark, cloudy, or maybe even like a type of yellow. So, verify bag connections. Heater bag was the red one. Last bag, which is typically for medicine, and then all your extra bags. Yes, that's how we have it. And then I'll go for, through another prime. This is the next screen. And ensure blue line clamp is open. The blue line, this line, the line that is going to be connected to the line that's actually gonna go to your catheter. So it is open and we're gonna press next. Final prime before you're gonna hook up. All right, y'all, that's gonna be my video on dialysis. You know the deal. Give me a sub to boost my motivation and ego. Give a like for the YouTube algorithm and leave me a comment. Let me know how dialysis is going for you. And if you're not on dialysis, comment about if this video relieved any stress for you or what you think about it. Till next time, warriors.